Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channel's Television, live from Lagos. Uh, here are some of the pictures that you sent in. Let's begin with this one from Ujemen at Igboma area of Edo State. It shows a bent electricity pole. Our eyewitness reporter says that it has been like this for some time now and wants men of the Benin Electricity Distribution Company to do something about it. Next is this photo from Egbeda at the Konjo area of Lagos State. It shows flood, which our eyewitness reporter says is as a result of the heavy downpour earlier in the day. According to him, the rainy season is a nightmare for residents there. From Maraban Rido in Kaduna State comes our next image of a bad road. Our eyewitness reporter wants the state government to attend to it urgently. And finally is this picture from Oyo Road in Ilori, the Kwara State Capital, showing an overloaded vehicle with people sitting on it. Our eyewitness reporter wants this discouraged because of the dangers it pretends. We do sincerely thank you for sending in these pictures. We ask that you keep them coming. A special prayer has been held for the health of President Muhammad Buhari by the Zamfara State Government. The prayer session was organized by the state government as part of the activities to mark the second anniversary of the president in office. It also marks the sixth anniversary of Governor Abdulaziz Yari's administration in the state. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will immediately uh, return him back healthy and uh, with all power and uh, commitment to move Nigeria forward. Actually, I also want to seize this opportunity to thanks my governor, Al-Haj Abdulaziz Yara Wakachiti Mamufara, and also to thanks the committee that uh, is in charge of this uh, year's uh, celebration of uh, democracy uh, and the uh, 60th anniversary of this administration. Reports by online news media Niger.com Quoting the Information Minister, Lai Mohammed is granting an interview to Channel's television on the President's health is not true. Mr. Mohammed did not make any such comments on Channel's television. Niger.com had stated on its website that the Minister had the intention of speaking on Made in Nigeria goods, but accidentally admitted that the President is in a London hospital. would like to say once again that that information was not right here on Channel's television. Waste is an inevitable byproduct of human existence which, if not properly handled, could lead to environmental pollution and health hazards. This next report takes a look at illegal waste dump sites in Benin City, the Edo State capital, and the challenges of ref uh, refuse disposal there. Benin City, the Edo State capital, has over the years been transformed into a metropolis of sorts with modern infrastructures that tell the story of the ancient city. This city, which is home to an estimated over one million people as of 2016, is equally a place where people work or engage in one form of business or the other. It also generates waste of different kinds as a result of human activities. According to a recent survey by an international non-governmental organization called for Africa, there are 92 illegal dump sites in Benin Metropolis, with Ego local government area accounting for 18, Ikubaoha 33, and Oedu 41. Some of the residents around these dump sites say they are aware of the health implications of having such waste around them. There's a bridge that's supposed to take all the water from um, Sakuba Road, Junction by Ted, that was built by um, uh, one construction company. The water would have been channeled down this way and off to the Koba River. But simply because of the refuse dump here now, the bridge is blocked. You can see the concrete now. Cannot holding, it cannot flow through. Even that side itself cannot flow through well. So apart from that, the the pollution alone, the smell emanating from it is so toasting that sometimes when you hear it, you start experiencing stomach disorder. For these other residents, strict implementation of the waste management laws will help to discourage the indiscriminate dumping of refuse at undesignated sites. Mosquito not the let us rest. Everywhere, everywhere is smelly. If not be God work out, you go bring you go bring disease, bring death. If not be God Almighty who they shelter us. And when I begin to talk to them, they begin to curse me. 
they begin to ask me whether I may get that land. The smell is very bad. It's affecting us really, and it's not good. We are pleading the government to come and assist us so that this place will look good. A medical practitioner, Dr. Chinyere Wongugu, says most reported illnesses are due to these uncontrolled waste disposal. We are creating a breeding site for for organisms and vectors. Vectors are um, like insects that transmit diseases like flies and mosquitoes. Those are called vectors. So when you have indiscriminate dumping of refuse close to your house, these vectors have places to breed. And you know mosquitoes cause malaria. The conclusion here is that a more positive attitude towards waste management by residents will be of immense benefit to all. Over one million children and pregnant women in Bochy State will have direct access to quality nutrition and health care services annually for the next four years. The support is provided under the European Union program to strengthen primary health care and community resilience for improved maternal, newborn and child health and nutrition. Chairman of the Bauchi State Primary Healthcare. The head of the European Union Cooperation in Nigeria is in Bauchi State to present an overview of the health intervention program targeting women and children. The project is in line with Sustainable Development Goal Number Three, which ensures healthy lives and promotes well-being for all. This project is going to focus on where the greater majority of the community access their health needs and will now recognize one primary health care award based on the alma mater vision and also the vision of the federal government of Nigeria and that of this state government to make one PSC per world fully functional. The EU calls on His Excellency to, uh, to support and intervene in the program so that uh, the adequate number of skilled manpower to deliver the, the dearly needed health services will be engaged and that uh, your health teams uh, will own and support uh, the full implementation of this program. The Bauchi state government is dedicating 16% of the state's annual budget to improving the health sector. But there are challenges with manpower. During the lifespan of this pro project, as we continue with monitoring and evaluation of the performance of the project, we should look at ways and means of rejigging the project in such a way that we will assist state li states like Bochi, uh, for example, to set up at least one college of nursing and midwifery in each of the senatorial uh, zones for starters. The European Union and her development partners are cooperating with the state government to commit 54 million euros to the program, which will run till 2020. The United States government says that it has lost 500 million naira in revenue in recent times. It is pointing fingers at the alleged arrests and intimidation of revenue collection agents and destruction of revenue signages by the Inspector General of Police ex Squad. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Police in the state, Mr. Bashir Makama, told Channels Television that the activities of revenue collectors who block federal highways are unlawful. Scenes from the alleged destruction carried out by the Inspector General of Police ex court, leaving revenue signages vandalized with over 50 revenue collectors arrested by the police. Channel's television crew visited the North Bank Revenue Collection Point where the signage erected had been destroyed with empty holes, which confirmed the state government claims. Addressing a news conference in Makodi, the revenue consultant called on the Inspector General of Police to caution the ex court team to stop the arrest and harassment on the highways. They have resorted to the one-town arrest and brutal intimidation of innocent revenue collection agents, as well as continuous destruction of revenue inspection points and their facilities. They also threaten legal action if their colleagues detained despite court orders are not released immediately. Disease from conspiring with associations and other unlawful agencies to extort money from taxpayers as well as cause the unconditional release of members of our forum 
arrested at their lawful duty post. Responding to these allegations, the Benue State Commissioner of Police says the ex court is carrying out the mandate of the Inspector General of Police to protect Nigerians from arbitrary and illegal taxations. The action of the IG, I believe, is prompted because of the outcry of members of the public, the outcry of organized trade unions, either those that have to do you know, with uh, carrying produce, commuting from one end to another, and because of the tools that are being collected, which of course also uh, brings about so many things. But the chairman of the state revenue board disagrees. He says the board and the police have been prosecuting illegal revenue collectors. She also condemns the clampdown on state revenue collectors. I would have expected that if the IG so directed, the squad will work with us. They will look at what the law says in Benue State. Because these are taxes and levies that are domesticated by state. According to her, the activities of the police have negatively affected the Benue State revenue drive from agriculture-related and haulage taxes. It has impacted negatively because the revenue has fallen. Because you know, it's only Dangote Cement we have here. And the Nigerian brewery, just two companies. So how can we generate revenue from two companies? For now, the first off between the Benue State Revenue Collectors and the police continue until the case is resolved by the court. Ogun State, southwest of Nigeria, has so far attracted 110 companies and the state government is promising to bring more investors into the state. This is according to the state governor, Ibukunle Amosu, while declaring open the eighth gateway trade fair in Abeokuta, the state capital. Governor Amosu is also encouraging micro, small and medium enterprises to use the trade fair to showcase their businesses to residents and visitors. As a responsive administration, we have not only put in place the necessary ambience for business to thrive, which resultantly has brought over 110 companies to our state. Mind you, these companies have invested in excess of between $200 million and in some instances over $2 billion. We have also embarked on massive infrastructural development across all the senatorial districts of our state as we are constructing new roads and bridges and reconstructing the existing ones to meet up with our famous Ogun standard. We are also working assiduously to see to the massive development of all other sectors of the economy, education, health, agriculture, commerce, etc., all in line with our mission to rebuild our dear state. The Ogun State Governor Ibukunle Amosu. When Denise Ten returns ahead of CBN MPC third meeting of the year next Monday, analysts forecast key monetary parameters to remain at current levels. That's some business news. Join us again.